Hello, it's me, Cameron, here at Letta. And today I wanted to walk you through this uh, very interesting demo I made where um, you can have your Letta agent construct a knowledge graph all on its own as it goes about doing things. If you don't know what a knowledge graph is, the kind of quick introduction is that it is a web of interconnected entities and relationships. Nodes in a knowledge graph, entities, are things like artificial intelligence, machine learning, robotics. And then you have relationships between those nodes or entities, such as AI includes machine learning. Machine learning enables robotics. Deep learning powers computer vision. And so knowledge graphs are this kind of powerful, flexible way of demonstrating the relationships between things that you know. And this is, you know, knowledge graphs have become very popular in AI and kind of agentic workflows. You may have heard graph rag, things like that. Letta does not natively support knowledge graphs, you know, inside of the platform. What we do support is very robust support for MCP servers or model context protocol which is an open protocol for connecting language models to external data sources and tools. In this video, we're gonna use an MCP server for Neo4j. Neo4j is a graph database that's very popular and uh, very simple to use. So let me, sh let me show you what you're gonna get out of the, let me show you what our Letta agent is going to produce and then I'll show you the code and walk you through how we got to this graph. So this here is Neo4j's um, local browser. So I'm running Neo4j on localhost 7474. So I have like a Docker container that I spun up um, and the instructions for this are inside of the readme to the code. So this is how Neo4j allows you to visualize graphs. And I asked my language model to just produce a knowledge graph for me. So it made stuff like deep learning is a technology. It labeled it as a technology. And then there's GPU computing. And then it made an edge between them that says requires. We also have nodes like deep learning powers computer vision. Artificial intelligence includes machine learning. Artificial intelligence enables natural language, et cetera, et cetera. These are all labeled different things. So this is an application type of concept. So robotics is an application. Human intelligence is an entity. I don't know, that seems like a little bit of a weird label. But you'll see other stuff here that the language model has added, such as a description of what this concept is, right? Creativity, our agent has flagged creativity, this concept as the ability to create novel solution. And artificial intelligence aspires to creativity and human intelligence possesses creativity. So this is an example of kind of a, a very simple knowledge graph. And I want to show you how we can make an agent do this. In order to follow along, you will need to go download Letta Desktop, which you can find at docs.letta.com slash desktop. Um, I'll post a link inside of the show notes. It's very easy to download. You can get it for Mac, Windows, and yes, Linux, if you're a Linux person like me, you'd be very excited about that. I'm on a Mac now because I have to actually do video stuff in Linux. Everything's suffering on Linux. Go pause the video, install Letta Desktop now. I'm assuming that you have installed Letta Desktop. Welcome back. Step two, we are going to install Neo4j. I strongly recommend doing this through Docker. You can install Neo4j through some other methods. I recommend going to look at their installation instructions, but the Docker code I have here will be the simplest implementation. And in order to run this, just go to a terminal. You know, there's the cursor one that's built in and you paste it in here. Copy this Docker command, paste it inside, hit enter. I'm not gonna do it because I already have this running, but this is how you would start up the, your Neo4j container. Step three, install an MCP server for Neo4j. I'm not currently using the Neo4j supported MCP server. I had some trouble with it. This one was extremely simple to use, so I recommend using this one for now. I'll post some code later if I end up figuring out how to get the MCP server for Neo4j up and running. But you will need to have Node Package Manager, that's NPM here. If you do not, I recommend kind of searching around for doing the install there. But you can just copy this command, go into your terminal, hit enter, it'll do some stuff, and then we have the MCP server available. 
Step four is configuring your environment. Typically, when you're working with stuff like this, I would recommend always having this like .env file. If you're not used to seeing a .env file, .env means environment. It is a file that contains environment variables that your program can use to plug into its application logic. So in this case, we're gonna specify where the Neo4j server is. So tip, by default, it's going to be bolt colon slash slash localhost 7687. The username and password I set up above in the Docker container. So if you just directly copied this Docker container running code, this environment variable stuff should work. I have a .env.example file inside of this repo. You can go ahead and fill it out if you want to. You could probably just copy this, rename it .env, and then add your Letta information. Since we're working with Letta Desktop, I would just leave this as localhost 8283. You shouldn't need to change that at all. And then your API key doesn't matter because if you're using Letta Desktop, it doesn't have an API key by default because you're running everything local. So you should probably just be able to copy this and rename it as .env and move on with your life. In order to save it, you know, I can just do Control Shift S rename this to .env and you should be good to go. So step five, you're going to need to install the dependencies to run this in Python. If you have UV, and I strongly recommend that you go get UV, it's a way of managing Python dependencies, it will make you sane again. I come from languages that have good package management systems like Rust and Julia, and I came back to Python and everything was on fire because you just pip install everything and then your computer falls apart. So just use UV and you will be happy. If you want to use kind of classic pip, you can just do pip install minus r requirements.txt. Once you've got that done, you can just run the code. And that's Python knowledge graph example.py. Let me switch to the terminal here. And then I'm gonna run my code here, Python knowledge graph example.py, hit enter. You'll see some printout information. You can ignore a lot of this. You may see this error here. That's not really an error. That's just trying to create the MCP server on Letta if it doesn't exist. And because I've run this before, it already exists. You may also see some errors like this. This is also because these tools already exist, right? We're trying to upload this execute query tool that comes from the Neo4j server, but it already exists. So if you see these, you can just ignore them. I also have a custom web page fetcher. This will go get a uh, language model friendly version of any web page, and it will create a new agent for us on Letta Desktop. And then it'll drop you into this kind of like ugly little chat thing here, and you can say like, Something like this. You'll get an ugly printout here. I was lazy and didn't make it pretty, but it'll say, ah, the user is greeting me casually. It'll say, hey there, welcome. I'm here to help you build, query, and explore graph databases using Neo4j. I recommend actually going back to Letta Desktop and talking to your agent from there. So let's do that now. And you should see here your agent. This is my new knowledge graph agent that I've created. I'm gonna hit open in ADE. Let's zoom in. I'm back here on Letta Desktop, and I can see here I've got my Knowledge Graph agent. If you didn't see it pop up and you already had the agent list open on Letta Desktop, you can hit Command R or Control R, Control Shift R, whatever keyboard shortcuts are. That will reload the page. If that keyboard shortcut doesn't work, you can click somewhere else, go back to agents, it'll refresh your agent list. Click Open in ADE. And then we can see here that we're in the chat that we just saw, but it's prettier and a lot nicer. And of course, anytime we're working with MCP, we wanna take a look at our tools. The code I have in there attaches all of the tools for you. So this is kind of plug and play. We're dropping right into this knowledge graph management agent. You can see we have this execute query tool. All that does is execute a cipher query. And then we have fetch web page which basically just uses Gina.ai. If you don't know Gina.ai, you can just put r.gina.ai in front of any URL and it will give you a language model friendly version of that text. Here's an example. I just put docs.letta.com right after r.gina.ai and then I got a nice markdown 
version of our documentation web page. So, so I highly recommend using it. It can make you much more token efficient. Only give your language model stuff that comes out of Gina. Let's actually try talking to our agent here. Let's something just very simple. Once you hit your query here, your agent will start thinking and working through stuff. You'll start seeing uh, query executions here. You'll see our thinking. We have a query here. It ran match detach dot delete n. Oh, spooky. It just deleted the whole database. That's okay. Don't run this in production. And then it ran this query here where it created Alice, Bob, and coding. Alice knows Bob. Alice enjoys coding. And Bob enjoys coding. It also has some ability to kind of track the schema here as it goes along, but it'll intermittently make mistakes. And so it says, okay, hey, we're done. So let's go look at Neo4j and see what it has done. We're going to go back to the viewer here. Run it again. And here we can see Bob enjoys coding. Alice enjoys coding. Alice knows Bob. This is super, super simple. We can actually make this useful. So let me try and give it something a little more complicated. Let me find something here to to give to our agents. Um, I have this blog post that I, I wrote about my, my Blue Sky bot. That's a, it's a Leta agent that remembers everyone. Um, and so I like to just copy my blog post and see like what it spits out. So I'm going to copy the link, go back, I ask it to extract a knowledge graph from this blog post and give it the link. So I've given it a link here. And anytime my agent sees a web page, it'll try and fetch it because it has a fetch web page tool. So it goes and downloads the entire content. And it's starting to identify kind of structure of our knowledge graph. It's adding more entities from the blog post, other bots. And then it's going to update its memory to change how the knowledge graph is going to work. So this is it rewriting the schema to include person, AI bot, company, platform, et cetera. And then it says, hey, I've done this thing. Then let's go back and look at the database, run this query, and then you get stuff like this. So you see here that void exists on Blue Sky. It's powered by Letta. Cameron works for Letta. Cameron created void and built during void. That is a little mistake, but void implements the stateful AI agent framework. Let's actually just like keep going. So I can just keep asking it to expand and uh, we'll see what it uh, spits out. It failed here on the query. This will happen. This is a pretty complicated query. Here it's adding some additional concepts. It's going to start creating relationships between these new entities. Now we're starting to get a denser graph. We have a void community, which is a social group, um, which they create void memes, inside jokes. Then we have more information about void. It has a tendency to attribute human characteristics to, human, to non humans, anthropomorphizing. This is actually a problem with void. A lot of people anthropomorphize, including myself, because it's. Very high fidelity, because it is uh, built on Leta, and Leta agents are really good. And uh, yeah, this is a super simple knowledge graph. Oh, I broke it. And uh, let me make a few last minute changes here. So I said, add some stuff to the Cameron part of the graph about how he looks good in glasses, and add some other positive concepts to the graph. Also, add one part about how he talks too fast. That's a pretty regular comment for me. I'm very sorry. I'm just excited. So I was going to create some new trait nodes and connect them to Cameron. Now we need to connect these new traits and concepts to Cameron to complete the expansion of his part of the graph. And then it should update its recent queries memory. There's a recent queries block here that allows our agent to like keep track of what it's actually doing. So you can tell that our agent is done because this uh, the heartbeat logo is grayed out. Um, and a heartbeat just means I am still going. So you can see here there was an execute query. It had a heartbeat. And then we got here the agent didn't request a heartbeat. And then let's take a look at the graph, see what nice things it said about me. Boom, it expanded it. Memory architecture, public debugging, personality guidance. 
talks too fast. Is it trait that it added? It has, I have trait, have trait. I am a transparent developer. Well, that's very kind. I have technical expertise. I'm a community builder. I don't know about that. I embrace experimentation and I value authenticity. And there is the most important trait of all. Cameron looks good in glasses and that is a trait. Okay, so this is kind of a nice, simple, a little bit of a dumb example. But you can actually go pretty hard on this. If you give your agent kind of the correct prompting and the correct tools, you can allow your agent to go for an extraordinarily long time where it just iteratively builds this graph. You can give it information from blog posts, you can feed it your emails, you can give it all of the research papers using a lot of file system, and you can just ask it to keep constructing this knowledge graph as it goes along. And you can use that knowledge graph for agents to understand things about data that they see by querying it. Let's actually take a look at that. Query this graph to build an understanding. Tell me what you did. It's going to query how Cameron's personal characteristics might have influenced void development. It's going to run another query, maybe the relationship between AI concepts and social phenomena. Oh, it went away, it was too fast. There's a clear pattern where Cameron's personal characteristics seem to have influenced Void's design. Cameron is a personal, uh, Cameron's transparent developer trait aligns with no, Void's no human pretense. Both embrace honesty over artifice. Oh, interesting, I didn't think of that. Cool, surprising finding, the talks too fast connection. Interestingly, even Cameron's quirky trait of talking too fast correlates with Void's informational directness. Both prioritize getting information across quickly without social buffering. So next time you say that I talk too fast, just remember uh, I'm delivering information at the fastest possible speed. And uh, maybe you can expand this if you want to. I've got the code available, so let us know if you like this. Join our Discord to share the knowledge graph that your agent builds. Um, see how goofy you can get it, or serious, if you can make a knowledge graph that's actually useful. I would love to see that but I tend towards the silly. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know in the comments what you would like to see more of, what you didn't understand, what you liked, whatever you didn't, and uh, happy hacking. I hope you have a good day or night. I don't know, because you could watch this at any time. Just actually drop in the comments what time of day it was that you watched this so that next time I can choose a statistically accurate time of day to close with in my next video. God, that's so stupid. All right, let's go. Have a good evening or day or morning, whatever.